Tanisha Sullivan, candidate for Secretary of State, is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. After winning widespread support at the Democratic State Convention, Sullivan now looks to take down a long-term incumbent in the September primary. Can she do it? The candidate is here this morning. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. And welcome to OTR on this Sunday morning. I'm Ed Harding, along with New South Wales political reporter Janet Woods. Great to have you with us, and we're pleased to have Tanisha Sullivan alongside this morning. She would like to become the next Secretary of the Commonwealth. She is an attorney and life sciences executive, a civil rights advocate, and president of the Boston chapter of the NAACP. Born in Boston, resident of Hyde Park, she's a graduate of the University of Virginia, holds graduate degrees from BC in law and business. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you. Thank you. And good Happy morning. To be here. On this very hot, hot Sunday. All right, huh? <laughs> so Beacon Hill, as you know, ended its session in chaos. Uh, no tax relief plan was passed despite months of negotiations between the governor and the legislature. Do they need to come back before the election to return money to taxpayers? I think it's really important um, that the legislature do all it can to relieve the economic hardship specifically that families are experiencing. And of course, uh, coming back into session would allow them to, you know, ensure that we can hopefully advance child care credits for families, help ensure that families can get some tax credits and refunds into their pockets when they need it most. And the uh, tax plan that they were considering, which they dumped at the last minute, should that be part of whatever money they return? Oh, I, I think that it's important for the legislature to take that up. Um, again, right now we know that families, residents across Massachusetts are feeling the economic pain of this moment. And I think that we need to do all we can um, to ensure that we're helping folks along. And, mm -hmm. you know, $200, $300, $500 mm -hmm. can make a real difference uh, in the lives of families right now. I, and you talk about a shared experience. And, 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 and I understand that it's not under the purview of the Secretary of the Commonwealth, but this is a shared experience for people who live in the area. Absolutely. And I'm talking about a big story this week with the MBTA. Mm. You, you don't live far from the Orange Line, right? So, you, 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 which is going to be closed for a month later in a, in a couple of weeks. Did, did Governor Baker make the right decision and as Secretary of State, should you be the Secretary of State, would you have any tools to improve the MBTA outside of the bully pulpit? Yeah, I think, yes, I do believe, we all know that the T has long needed um, some very targeted interventions to ensure safety and accessibility, right? And having a fire mm -hmm. on the orange line, I mm -hmm. think, was the wake-up call um, that we absolutely needed. So shutting down the orange line, I do believe, um, is the right decision. However, we've got to make sure that the nearly 100,000 plus people right. who use the orange line actually have viable and reliable options to get to get around um, the Commonwealth, recognizing that the Orange Line runs through the heart of many of mm -hmm. our cities. We're talking about working people. We're talking about people of color. We're talking about folks who absolutely rely on um, being able to use public transportation. Well, it is, to underscore that point, it's the second most used line on average. It, it is, as you said, over 100,000 a week, so that's yeah. almost a half million a month. That's right. It moves a lot of people. Senator Markey had talked about, one of those who had talked about, let's make it free, at least during the 30-day period. Should, mm -hmm. it, should the T-system be free for this 30-month period, 30-day period? I believe that we absolutely need to explore it. Look, you know, as, as we talked about at the top, I mean, the legislature is now out of session. We've got billions of dollars of federal funding that has yet to be allocated, has yet to make it into the hands of the people. Um, so certainly uh, the financial resources is not the problem. And so if we are able to make the tea free during this time at a very minimum, I think that we should do it. Let's talk about your probably your number one issue uh, in your campaign. You're campaigning on the need to expand voting rights here in Massachusetts. Incumbent Bill Galvin push for expanded in-person early voting, mail-in voting, as well as a same-day registration. All of them, except for same-day registration, was passed by the legislature. Could you have done better than Bill Gavin? Actually, I am running because we need to do more as it relates to the full spectrum of our democracy. Yes, the Secretary of State is the chief elections officer, and we must continue to advance voting rights here in Massachusetts. It is, we should be ashamed that uh, it is 2022 and we still don't have same day or election day voter registration. Maine adopted same day voter registration in 1973. He That's did a, push for it, though. He did not champion it. And the fact of the matter is, we're a half century behind. 
But that office is responsible for more than voting rights. In this, at this moment in our democracy, we need a Secretary of State's office that is looking for ways to use the power of that office to clear pathways of opportunity and remove barriers for folks to help improve quality of life. We've got a Secretary of State's office that has done virtually nothing to relieve the pain that small business owners are experiencing, especially right now. Massachusetts is the most expensive state in the country to start a business. And our small business community is struggling, especially coming through COVID. The Secretary of State's office should be advocating for lower fees for our small business community. The Secretary of State's office should be advocating and providing more supports to our small business community, connecting them to the resources in our government so that they can thrive. But we've also got an issue with transparency. Massachusetts is the least transparent state in the country. And our Secretary of State, Bill Galvin, has done very little to help ensure that the people of Massachusetts actually have access to the information we need to hold our government accountable and to actively participate in our democracy. Very quickly, you mentioned COVID. Uh, how do you think he handled the uh, voting situation during the pandemic? Well, I think uh, as has been his practice, uh, he was reactive in the moment. The fact of the matter is voting rights advocates have been fighting for vote by mail for well over a decade. Massachusetts fell behind 30 other states when it came to vote by mail. It literally took a global public health pandemic for Bill Galvin to finally support vote by mail. The fact of the matter is, year after year, our voting rights community, our civil rights community is fighting with a Democratic Secretary of State in Massachusetts to advance voting rights. That's a problem. And what we know right now in 2022 is that our democracy is under attack. We cannot look to Congress to save us. We certainly can't look to the United States Supreme Court in this moment. All eyes are on the state. In the, in the centerpiece, the heartbeat of our democracy, the, the champion of voting rights must be the Secretary of State's office. And right now, we don't have a champion in that office. One, one key responsibility of the, of the Secretary of State is, is the watchdog over security violations. And so as an attorney, as we mentioned, and, and talk about, if you can, bring to the table your experience in this area and why a watchdog is important. Especially as a corporate attorney yourself. Yes. Yeah. So yes, I'm in my now 20th year, hard to believe, 20th year of, of legal practice. And it is critically important that we we have a securities division that is that is working hard every day to ensure that pensions and 401ks um, are protected from fraud, that people can retire with dignity. Mm -hmm. That is critically important, and I do believe this is an area where we've got to continue to keep enforcement top of mind. At the same time, I think it's important for this office to be mindful that this is this too is an evolving landscape. We've got um, new assets evolving all the time. We've got new digital assets assets like cryptocurrency, where regulations have yet to be settled. And so I believe, and I will as Secretary of State, ensure that yes, we are continuing to enforce the current securities regulations, but that we are looking forward to what is coming to ensure that we've got regulations that do protect people, but also regulations that allow for inclusive participation. As a, a corporate attorney, do you feel that there are rampant violations within the corporate world? World as of all these uh, areas that you've just talked about? I do believe that when it comes to securities regulations, that we've got to continue to make sure that Massachusetts is leading, ensuring that retirement accounts, 401ks, pension plans are protected from fraud. But in addition to that, I believe it's important for us to be mindful of what may be coming down the pike. Case in point, the fact that we've got new digital assets, a new um, regulatory landscape that is yet unsettled. As Secretary of State, I will be proactive in participating in the development of those regulations. I'm not going to sit back and wait for them to be handed down, as has been the practice of the current Secretary of State. But the other piece of this is, when it comes to the security space or it comes to the corporation space, what's critically important is that this office in its role as Chief Information Officer for the Commonwealth is doing the work in our communities to ensure that everyday people actually 
know what it means mm -hmm. to have a securities mm -hmm. division, mm -hmm. know what it means, you know, to be able to participate in a school committee meeting or in a town council meeting. This office must be more proactive. It must be more engaged. The Secretary of State, I believe, is the chief democracy officer here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, meaning that this office must consistently be looking for ways to ensure that the people of Massachusetts have access to the information they need to participate in our government, that the people of Massachusetts are inspired, motivated, and encouraged to not only cast a ballot, but to participate in the full spectrum of our democracy. Tanisha Sullivan is with us this morning. We're on the record.